In this video, we'll see a few other interesting applications of diodes. Let's start with the simple clamped capacitor circuit shown here in figure B. Now the circuit looks very much like a peak detector, except that the output VO is being taken as the voltage across the diode rather than the voltage on the capacitor VC. One way to understand the operation of the clamped capacitor is to recognize that with the diode polarity connected as shown here, VC will simply detect and hold the most negative going peak of the waveform at VI. So in this case, VC would pick off the peak at negative six volts and with the polarity of the diode and VC as indicated, we would see a voltage VC equal to six volts. The output voltage VO would then simply be equal to VI plus VC. And indeed, that's exactly what you see at the output. You see the input waveform shown on the left shifted up by six volts so that the negative most peaks become zero. And therefore, depending on the peak to peak amplitude that appears at VI, that's what we see. We see that same peak to peak amplitude at the output, but shifted up. So in this case, the peaks get shifted up to plus 10 volts. But we can break this down a little bit more uh, and analyze it a little bit more carefully. So first, let's consider what happens in case one, where VI is equal to negative six volts. So in this case, if you imagine, let's say initially the capacitor voltage VC is somewhere around zero volts, then um, you might imagine that with negative six volts applied at VI, we would see a voltage below ground at VO. But that would cause the diode to turn on and adopting an ideal diode model just to understand the circuit's behavior, then that would effectively clamp the right plate of capacitor C at ground. So with the input voltage VI less than zero, the output is clamped at ground, zero volts by the diode. Then, and so that's, uh, that's exactly which you see here in case one, and again here in case one, the output's right at zero volts. The other case of interest here arises when VI is plus four volts. So in this circumstance, having charged up VC to six volts here, we see that voltage held across the capacitor, giving rise to a voltage of 10 volts at the output. This is a reverse bias on the diode D. And using our ideal diode model, that means we can replace it with an open circuit so that there's no current flowing. So that's why in case two, we see at the output VO 10 volts. So in summary, the circuit is called a clamped capacitor because the diode clamps the right-hand side of the capacitor C to ground and won't let it go below ground. The voltage across the capacitor C is maintained just like in a peak detector and the waveform at VI therefore just appears superimposed on ground. A simple modification of the clamped capacitor circuit is shown here. You see the clamped capacitor, in this case, is not clamping 
the output voltage to ground, but is rather clamping it to a voltage VCC that's applied at the lower terminal of the diode in the schematic. Hence, rather than VI being shifted up so that its most negative going peak ends up at ground, it's shifted up so that its most negative going peak is shifted all the way up to VCC. You can think about what happens when VI equals the most negative going peak. In this case, it's a sinusoid with a peak amplitude of VP. And then recognize that the diode will turn on using an ideal diode model. We may therefore replace it with a short circuit. And you end up with a voltage across this capacitor equal to VCC plus the negative going amplitude at VI. Therefore, at the output, you see VI plus that capacitor voltage, VCC plus VP. When VI increases to any voltage above negative P, the diode will simply turn off and the voltage on the capacitor will be held so that VO is always a shifted version of VI in accordance with this expression. You can think of the input voltage as literally being pulled up by its bootstraps, hence the name bootstrapping circuit. The voltage VCC sets the lower boundary of the output waveform. And here, remember that we've used an ideal diode model, so we've neglected the 0.7 volt forward drop across the diode. In some applications of this circuit, VCC can actually be a slowly time varying waveform. In such cases, at the output, you see VI superimposed on top of the voltage VCC. Finally, let's consider this voltage doubler circuit. And if you look carefully at it, you may notice that it's in fact a clamped capacitor. followed by a peak rectifier. The only catch is that the diode polarities are reversed compared to the clamp capacitor and peak rectifier circuits that we've seen previously. So considering the clamp capacitor, if you look at what diode D1 is doing, it's basically ensuring that the voltage VD1 can't um, drop or go above ground because if the voltage VD1, this internal node, tries to go above ground, then D1 turns on and using an ideal diode model clamps it right at ground. So if we consider the case illustrated here where the input's a sinusoidal waveform, pictured in black on the right, what we've got is the peaks of the input sinusoid clamped down at ground. Then as the input drops below those peaks by the peak-to-peak -peak amplitude to VP, the waveform at VD1 will become negative and that full waveform will appear shifted down so that the peaks are clamped right at ground. When the output waveform, uh, when the voltage VD1 goes negative, that means that the diode D1 is reverse biased. So um, it certainly won't turn on, it'll just be an open circuit. Next comes the peak rectifier, but again, the polarity of the diode D2 is reversed compared to the peak rectifier we're used to seeing. So connected with this polarity, what we'll actually get is it'll detect the negative peaks of the waveform at VD1. The negative peaks are equal to twice the peak amplitude of the input sinusoid, or more generally, the peak-to-peak -peak amplitude of whatever waveform shows up here. And the peak detector will simply um, 
catch those peaks and maintain it as a constant voltage across capacitor C2. So um, the interesting property here is that it can take a sinusoidal waveform and give you a DC waveform that's equal to the peak to peak value, which is actually twice the peak voltage of the sinusoid, hence the name voltage doubler.